Joseph Benedict Chifley. Uh, it's a grand name, but I'm not a grand person at all. I'm a simple man with simple tastes. Uh, I married my wife Lizzie in 1914 and we lived in the same house ever since then, this house. I was and I, I think I've always remained a train driver at heart. I'm a Bathurst boy through and through. You stand outside the railway station, that's my country. I was born just down the road at 29 Havana Street. I was offered the freedom of London and did turn it down. Um, but I was also offered the freedom of Bathurst. And not for one second did I think that I would ever refuse it. I'd actually been a Privy Councillor and, and Prime Minister of Australia. But to be the free man of Bathurst, that was the greatest honour of all. My grandfather, an old Tartar if ever there was one, he used to thump the table with stories about the old days and the injustices. And I think that did awaken in me a, a thought that injustices could be righted. From my early life in Bathurst, were there any pivotal moments in that? There were many. The one that strikes me at the moment is the, the 1917 train strike. The New South Wales Railways tried to bring in a system of measurement of people's work called the Taylor Card System. And everything you did would be measured in time by a foreman. It had nothing to do with improving the, the lot of the worker or safety. It was just a, a cost cutting exercise, laughingly called productivity. The strike ended when the government deregistered the union, a very vengeful act by the New South Wales government. As well as that, train drivers and firemen were sacked. I was reinstated myself, but at a lower level as a fireman. The support of the men and women in Bathurst really impressed me. And it made me realise that with the political support of the community, Injustices could be changed. Uh, the economic system had to be changed because there are a lot of poor people. You know, Bathurst, there are a lot of poor people. In Australia, many poor people. And the system had to be changed that those people could move up in life and realise their dreams. I did enjoy talking to people, but I truly believe that the only way to find out what was worrying the people of your electorate was to get out and talk to them and hear what they had to say and the more you did it the more receptive people were to talking to you face to face uh, and really talking about their issues. And Ben you had a real knack for coming up with phrases like the hip pocket nerve. Which I uh, hear is still in use today uh, and it's the most sensitive nerve in the electorate as we found out on many occasions when we haven't kept uh, our, our sense of the hip pocket nerve and we've been turfed out. In the days before manufacturing took off, and as you know, we, we started off in post-war reconstruction because the country had been decimated by having to go onto a war footing, which meant that uh, all the resources of the country were poured into the war effort, as it should be, because we had to protect our country. Uh, and then to uh, try and get the country back to a normal level of operation, we really had to find ways to, to help people find normal work and also to employ uh, a lot of the, the, these soldiers that have been forced to leave their employment and go overseas to fight for our country and they came pouring back into the country. They, they, we couldn't leave things for for mass unemployment to ensure. So really, um, Ben, with the hydroelectric scheme and the tsunami mountain, that was uh, the first attempt to move away from the coal-based economy. Well, a small step, but yes, one step to try and get away from coal. 
and to also, uh, it also allowed us to uh, bring in some skills from overseas with uh, a lot of migrant workers coming in. Pure, purely uh, uh, provided some employment for people, uh, not just uh, down in the snowy and you know, surrounding areas, but across the country. Uh, and also provided a base for the development of skills that would be vital in the future. Uh, but yeah, for sure, it, uh, it provided uh, coal-free electricity, uh, and as they, they may say in modern times, renewable energy. We started off uh, helping that with the, the opening the, the Holden factory, so that we could manufacture a purely Australian car. Uh, yeah, as the, as the first Holden came off the assembly line, I, I couldn't hold myself back and I just said, she's a beauty. Ben, uh, when you look back at your time in politics and your time as a member for Bathurst and the time as Prime Minister, what's, what's your single abiding theme to your political life? I think if you see something that's wrong, uh, you see an injustice that needs to be righted, you believe in it, then you must follow it through to try and change it. You bring the train to the station, Ben, just like a train driver. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Mm. As we've said, maybe I've never stopped being a train driver.